In the ultimate social experiment, 300 Minecraft players are stranded on an island full of zombies and are forced to work together to try and rebuild civilization. We gave the players absolutely no help or guidance, so it's entirely up to them to build a zombie-proof base, elect a leader, and if it comes down to it, wage war against the undead and other teams. This will be incredibly challenging, as the players are in hardcore mode, so if they die, then they'll be dead forever. Will the players band together to survive, or will they descend into chaos and join the undead? Sit back, relax, and pick a team to root for, as I present to you Minecraft Civilization in a zombie apocalypse. We start our story on Blue Team's Island, where the players swam to shore from the huge shipwreck. They had 20 precious minutes until night fell and massive hordes of zombies descended upon them. So they used their time to punch down palm trees and craft themselves some basic tools. Here, take this. Okay. Oh, thank you. One player, Adam, suggested that food would be the most important resource the team would need. Hey lads, listen up. I reckon we should head south to go get food from the jungle zombies. To explain, in different regions of the map, the zombies drop different loot. For example, if you go to the Arctic, the zombies there might drop diamonds. And if you go to the desert, the zombies there might drop netherite. This means that teams will need to carefully prioritize where they explore. Adam's team listened to him, and they all journeyed south towards the jungle, where they came across the ruins of a huge mine temple. The players spent some time pillaging the temple for all its valuables. By the time everyone arrived at the temple, night had fallen, and with that, hundreds of zombies began emerging from the shadows. The players were forced to fight for their lives against all kinds of zombies. There were explosive zombies that blew up, ah, what the as well as these moss-covered jungle zombies that spewed out projectiles. Who fight? Not messing with that. Yo guys, I'm actually gonna die. No, no, no. It was a huge battle, with everyone working together to defend each side of the temple. Unfortunately, despite Blue Team's best efforts, players were beginning to die. We lost someone. You get us on the north. People. With the deaths quickly mounting up, players began to panic. Oh god, there's so many of them. However, Adam stepped up and did his best to calm the civilians. Lads, calm down and get to the top of the temple. His teammates listened to him and fortified their position at the top of the temple. It was there that they managed to hold their position against the zombies. Adam himself, though, was cut off from his teammates and was in some serious trouble. He was chased through the temple until he found an exposed sewer network. That was way too close. Back up top, players continued to fight off the undead, waiting patiently for morning to arrive. Over on Green Team's island. Yeah, so to start with, every team gets their own island. Then after 10 full Minecraft days, the teams will be transported to the same island where they can settle their differences. The Green Team citizens swam to the shore and all ventured over to the woodland town, where they raided its houses and looted all its chests. Then they decided it would be wise to split the civilization up into two main teams, a food team and a protection team. The protection team, led by Templar Turtle, journeyed up north to the swamp biome, where they came across an abandoned swamp village, whilst the food team, led by a player named Derwin, stayed at the woodland town, harvesting crops and fishing. While the main civilization had been hard at work, five players had quickly journeyed over to the Arctic region of the map and formed a radical group called the Zombie Rights Activists. They'll be very important later on. Back at the swamp, things weren't looking good. The players were completely outnumbered by the zombies. Oh my god, there's so many of them! And even worse, there were some strange-looking swamp zombies Zombies that had a terrifying ability. Hang on, just make it all over safe. Oh, he, he throws yeah, stuff. Okay. Ocean One's just gonna snipe us. After losing a few players, where did half our group go? The protection team realized they had run out of food. Oh, Somebody drop my hundred pieces of food. I'm at half health. So they ventured south out of the deadly swamp and decided to make themselves a tree house. Should we climb up this tree here? And make here. a tree house. Let's, house. Make a tree house. Let's make a tree house. Let's make a tree house. Which would act as a sanctuary for the fleeing protection players. I see the tree house. Oh, I see people. Oh, salvation. <laughs> I can't be laughing, it's gonna be me in a minute. However, the protection team still had food shortages, and with night having fallen and the hordes of zombies approaching, oh, we got zombies incoming. they were now trapped on the treehouse. Then suddenly, the protection team's prayers were answered. Hello everyone, we are from the food team. Bro, please save us. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Where are you? We have a bunch what? of food and we are willing to trade. We have a treehouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll come over. So she gathered her people and journeyed north to save the protection team. When they arrived, they were met by this. Oh wow, that's a lot. No, don't try to fight them, just run, run! give you more the protection team, being very near starvation, were happy to see their saviors. Ah, uh, bread! Uh, they were completely surrounded by zombies, though. Oh, it's so terrifying to look down and see all of the zombies. <laughs> On Yellow Team's island, after boating to the shore, the players soon formed up into small groups. Then each of them set off on their own journey across the map. Firstly, a lone player called Beebag had journeyed to the capital city, where he fought off night zombies that dropped powerful armor. This quickly made him the strongest player on the server. Beebag, if you recall, was the ruthless warlord in my last video that led 
led his militaristic nation to victory. This fact was worrying many players on Yellow Team, as they were concerned that once again he'd attempt to take control of the nation by force. In the north, a player called Mr. Telly T plotted to assassinate B-Bag to stop him from taking over. My current hit, we 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 have a man by the name of B-Bag. He's got a bounty on his head. First though, he'd have to survive the swamp zombies. What is that? Oh, he's throwing potions! Wow, they are very strong! Oh, there's one on the bridge, there's one on the bridge! I'm gonna take out the bridge. No! Over in the desert region, a player named Race Champ had put together a large expedition group to explore and loot the Egyptian pyramid. They ventured through the dark winding tunnels, looting chests. However, they weren't alone. Oh my god, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm in the pyramid. Where? After ransacking the pyramid, Race Champ realized the yellow team was fractured. So, with the mission of unifying the people, he spoke to his group. Alright guys, we'll scatter all over the place. Let's group together and make a new base. He gathered his followers and ventured east towards the outskirts of the capital city to start a new base. The early days of the new base were rough, but eventually, after a considerable amount of death, no, we lost Mika. explosions and fire, with everyone working together, they were able to construct a somewhat safe sky base. News reached Mr. Tetley T of this new safe haven, so he embarked on an incredibly relaxed voyage over the mountains towards the base. Could all of them on me? Oh no! Over at the Woodland Village, a group of players were getting overwhelmed by the dead. Uh, guys, we should probably head over to the new base. Everyone decided it'd be best to migrate over towards the new colony. It was on this journey south that a player named Rap is Rap 123 found a pig. Hey, pig, I, I have a potato, come with us. The thing is, his team were moving south, and Rap is Rap didn't want to leave his pig behind. Guys, wait, guys, wait up, I, I'm, I'm bringing a pig. So, in the greatest journey mankind has ever seen, Rap is Rap led his pig over 1,000 blocks towards his destination. You're nearly there, buddy. <laughs> no! Everyone was furious with Mr. T. Someone killed the pig! Yeah, freaking Mr. T killed the pig! Guys, if you guys see Mr. T, kill him. And after getting chased by an angry mob of residents... Why? <laughs> Mr. T exiled himself to the north. Over on Red Team's island, the citizens were very cautious to leave the beach, so they came up with a plan. Yo, we don't really know what's out there, so yeah. I think we should probably just wait here until like an expedition team goes and checks it out. And that's what they did. A player named Illusionax rounded up a few brave players who were willing to travel out of the tropical biome. First though, the players stopped by the river town, where they ran through its streets, then looted all its houses, and began trading with one another. Ah, cheers mate. When night fell, they hid upstairs in one of the houses. Yeah, I, I know I just met you guys, but I feel like I've known you guys my whole life. Eventually, though, they gathered the courage to push on to the capital city. Just keep moving, guys. Just keep moving. Yeah, just, we'll, just, we'll be okay. We'll be okay. Where they came across a horde of night zombies. So, being the courageous players they were, they towered up and hid on a small platform. While the fearless expedition team were carrying on a sky platform, other players on red team were showing off their high IQs. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just head to the Go clutch, boys. No, no, no. No! no way! Back at spawn, Hytop and his group of citizens had also made a small sky base, on which they hid from what looked like hundreds of zombies awaiting the return of expedition players. I know they've had a pocket, so this is a lot, isn't it? There are so many. The expedition players, however, instead of venturing back to their comrades at spawn, decided to press on by boat to the volcanic region. After their small fleet of boats landed at the rocky shores, they disembarked and began mining up magma blocks. Yo! Guys, guys! Magma blocks! Drop! Push it, stuff. The expedition team decided they were too far away from the comrades, so they suggested starting a new base in the Mesa biome, just north of them. Let's go to the Mesa, where it's less fiery, and we'll make our colony there. Hytop agreed with this idea. Alright, that sounds good. We are on the way. When the expedition team arrived at the Mesa biome, they discovered an old abandoned fort, and began mining a dugout into one of the cliff sites. News had spread across the nation that the expedition crew were starting a safe haven for survivors, so people began arriving in droves. Along with these new migrants were Hytop and his group, as well as a player named Vaughn. Vaughn, it's Vaughn! Who clearly been stocking up on loot in the north. It was all looking great for Red Team until night fell, and with that came a huge horde of zombies. There's one hell of a horde. With only a few of the Red Team actually being equipped enough to be combat ready, they were forced to use TNT and whatever else they could find to fight off the zombies. Back on Blue Team's island, the citizens in the jungle had survived the night at the top of the Mayan temple, and since the zombies in the jungle region dropped plenty of food, the citizens now had tons of it. Then the players discussed their next move. Right, we've all agreed, we're going to the desert. So the citizens migrated westward over to the desert, when they arrived, they were delighted by what they found. There was a huge Egyptian pyramid, along with a sprawling desert city, as well as a lush oasis. Some of the civilians ventured up to the peak of the pyramid, then they began constructing themselves a base. Back down on the surface, it wasn't all sunshine oh and rainbows. God. The players had discovered that the desert was infested with hordes of mummified zombies, which when they hit you, do this. Oh my god, I can't see anything. Several citizens were lost in the chaos. No, I died! On the bright side though, they did occasionally
instantly drop netherite. The citizens built a sturdy defensive wall at the top of the staircase to stop the onslaught of mummies. It did a good job. However, it didn't stop the citizens from getting into trouble. Guys, 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 guys I fell down. Oh, oh God. God. Please, ah! Oh, no, he lost someone. Yeah, all his stuff is down there. He fell. Then, the civilization's chief builder, a player named ADG, fell down and was totally trapped by the mummies. The blue team leapt into action. We've got oh, you, yeah, And the players cooperated brilliantly and managed to work together to save their stranded teammate. You guys saved my life. Thank you. Back on the top of the pyramid, progress on the base was being made rapidly. Some players had even built a farm. Yo, the farm has been completed. So the residents didn't have to venture down to the surface and risk their lives to get food. It was around this time that Adam called on all the citizens to hold a meeting to discuss leadership of the blue team. Can the five members of the council please join me on here? Right guys, we're here to discuss the leadership. Even though most civilizations elect a leader, I disagree. I disagree. Yes, I, disagree. I don't think we should have one yep. person in control. Yeah, yep, I disagree. What needs to happen here? is everybody put your faith in this council here and we will work to provide for all of you. Adam then proceeded to sort the citizens into teams. One for building, one for defense, one for farming and one for warriors. Alright guys, if everyone can look at me. We're now gathered in the groups, okay? We're at the point now where we're going to start knuckling down, getting all the gear possible and we're setting up our civilization. Does everyone know what they've got to do now? Yeah! yeah. yeah. Everyone gets to work, everyone gets to work. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's come in, let's come in. Far away in the volcanic region of the map, a player named Pan had been conspiring against the government. He had gone around the map, raiding all the loot-rich structures. He had even grabbed two stacks of TNT from the dwarven mines in the north. I found yeah, a ton of TNT. North. Who's yeah. the guy who's got the TNT? Uh, wh wh who's asking? Adam. Adam who? Adam T H. I'm Pan. Pan, are you okay. with? Are you with the democracy? No, of you course with the not. Ah, okay. I'm oh, actually okay. to overthrow them. <laughs> that's good to know. With the amount of TNT I have, I think that's possible. He then ventured over to the abandoned gold mines in the Mesa Bay, where he met up with an equally geared player named Organiset, who shared his ambition for seizing power. I just one question for you. Why, why do you want to overthrow the government? Do you also I don't hate like them like listening me? Listening to people. Yeah. The two co-conspirers were now ready to spring their plan into action. Adam himself ventured north with a player named Spider and all the civilization's warriors. When they reached the mountains, they came across a player named Marco. How are you doing, mate? We're all doing fine, thank you. Um, how long have you been here? Oh, it's a long story. This place looks great. I think I'll set up camp here. I might get a bit lonely, but I'm sure it'll be fine, right? Ah, uh, what a wonderful day it is. I'm so glad I get to spend it with you, Mr. Scarecrow. Hey, everyone, get around. We're gonna have an election. So many amazing candidates. Ah, uh, he's definitely got my vote. I won? I won! I won the election! Wow, what an amazing crowd we have here today. <gasps> Who stole my carrots? I have no idea. Who could have done such a thing? It was you! Someone, get the king! I'm here, citizen. What happened? This person stole my carrots! Thievery is not allowed in my kingdom. You are to be exiled immediately. You know what? Screw you and your kingdom. I'm exiling myself. Come on, Mr. Scarecrow. You're coming with me. Adam and Spider, now a little confused, hastily moved their army back towards their home base. But they didn't get there fast enough. Having taken all the best fighters on their expedition, they had left the civilization completely defenseless. And so, Organiset, seizing the opportunity, sprung his plan into action. It was complete Whoa. carnage. Haha, <laughs> I got one! Right, let's put down some of this. Spider, along with a group of soldiers, were the first of the warriors to get back to the pyramid. They rushed through their base to Organiset. However, they had fallen straight into his trap. See ya, losers! Oh, I died! Oh, oh my god. god. The base, along with around nine blue team citizens, had all been annihilated by the senseless attack, and Organiset was able to flee the scene unscathed. <laughs> Got like eight. It was now morning on Green Team's island, and the main civilization had mustered the courage to jump down from their treehouse and face the undead. After some great coordination, the players had cleared the area. Then they all came to an agreement on what to do next. Are you going for the Arctic Castle then? Okay. Yeah, that's we're gonna make a base there. So the protection team started their journey west over to the Arctic region, while the food team stayed at the treehouse and gathered more supplies. Over in the mountainous region of the map, a group of fearless players were doing their thing. Why do we need crystals? I don't know, let's just go. <laughs> Scared the out of me. Two friends, Natty and Ryguy, were fighting for their lives when suddenly oh, a zombie grabbed Ryguy. Oh god! I screwed up! Oh, don't screwed up. die! Don't die! Don't die! Ryguy! Natty was struck with grief over the death of his friend, so he did what anyone else would do in that situation. He ventured over to the dwarven mines and collected stacks of TNT, then vowed to get back at the world that had wronged him. I will get revenge on this cruel world for you, Ryguy! I promise! <laughs> back in the north of the map, the protection team had discovered and looted a massive swamp 
fort, as well as a snowy market town. It was around this time that the food team decided they would follow the protection team. Alright, we have the food, so we'll be coming with you. So they set out on their own expedition west. In the Arctic, the protection team had discovered a gigantic castle. Now everyone just stormed the castle. Yeah, storm the, the castle. That's where the majority of the loot will be. When they ventured inside the castle, the protection team discovered they weren't alone. They were face to face with two of the zombie rice activists I mentioned earlier. Now the question is, do we trust them or do we just... No, I'm not trusting no, these not boys. No, not trustworthy, not trustworthy. I don't not think they, they can handle someone. eight of us critting them out with stone axes. It was a standoff. The protection team didn't want to risk losing any members in a fight. While the zombie rice activists had different intentions. While the two of them stalled the protection team in the castle, they had sent half of their group to intercept and kill the food team. Oh, there's someone in. Oh, guy, guy. Who is it? Who is it? Is it? Is it? Hey, hey, there's a person. Lovely today. Hi. Oh, hi. Would you like some food? But I'm afraid I have to kill you. Oh, no, why? The news of the massacre soon reached the protection team. Guys, the food team lady died. She was killed. Yet still, the protection team weren't sure whether they should start a fight. Someone just hit him and get started, like. Nah, we're gonna we're gonna I die don't... though. This gave the activists enough time to fully regroup their forces at the Arctic. Then the protection team made a huge blunder. Half their forces left the castle to kill zombies. Then came the question. Hello, people. We have just one question for you. Have you guys been killing zombies? Yeah? Without a moment's hesitation, the ZRA leapt into action. Murdering all the players in the castle. I'm dead. The teammates outside suddenly realized what was happening, and so they panicked and ran. No, guys, let's kill them. Let's kill them. We can't kill them. We, we've lost numbers. The ZRA weren't going to let them get away that easily, though. They're hit, they're hit. Then they hunted down each of the undergeared protection team players one by one. Oh, I just oh, died. Oh, oh, help. I'm dead, I'm dead. Oh, that's me dead. Oh. Oh, no. Holy sh Until there were none left at all. Well, uh, there goes the protection team. Back on Yellow Team's island, the people were safe and prospering at their new base. Citizens had even begun playing music as entertainment. Then suddenly, three players with diamond armor rolled up to the colony. They have full diamond armor and there's three of them. Oh, God. And started killing the residents' dogs. They're killing dogs. And then they even began murdering people. They were chasing me. Ah, uh, no, I'm dead. Everyone in a panic took refuge at the top of the sky base. Race Champ took the podium and rallied the people. Everyone, don't panic. We've got this. They've got the gear, but we have the numbers. This base is our home, and I have one. I'm not looking at these killers. Take it from us. Yeah. After this speech, the people voted to elect Race Champ as their leader. Yeah, I'm voting for Race Champ. And with that, Race Champ was rewarded a Protection 10 crown. Cheers, mate. Thank you. While all this was happening at the colony, another group of players at the capital city were planning to assassinate Race Champ by filling the throne room with TNT, lowering him over then blowing him up. However, they accidentally lured the diamond armor players instead, so the conspirators fled back to the throne room. Run! But they had hid all their TNT. Then this happened. One of them is underneath. You didn't... What? No! It looks like they assassinated themselves instead. The diamond armor murderers refocused their efforts back on wiping out the colony. Then the battle began. One is going up, one is going up, one is going up. To stop the diamond armor players from reaching the sky base, the citizens used bows and dropped TNT on them. Yep. But Unfortunately, no, 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 it went wrong, and this happened. Oh, oh god, I found yeah. The citizen was trapped down on the surface, and after being tricked by the diamond players, okay, I think he might be friendly. He was sadly killed. Oh, wow. oh, oh I'm oh, dead. No. Race Jump had had enough of waiting around, and decided to take the fight to them. Everyone, jump up, go, charge, go, go, go. Yes, Mr. Rodden, Mr. Rodden, Mr. Rodden, Guys, I'll go down, I'll go down. Kill him, kill him. Wait, he pulled, he pulled, he Under the valiant leadership of Race Champ, the undergeared resident had somehow overpowered and defeated the diamond equipped bullies. Nice. In the north, B Bag had been going around mugging people. Hey, uh, no Cory, can I get that helmet? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. New no, Cory, you're not winning I'm a fight against us, too. Drop your item, come out. Okay, we're killing uh, New Cory, I guess. Fine, I will give you. It was then that he heard the news that Race Champ had been elected the leader of Yellow Team. Race Champ won the election. And of course, he wasn't happy. I will not allow weak leaders to rule our nation. I need to take action. Over at Red Team's Mesa Sanctuary, things were going great. They had successfully repaired the hole in the wall, and everyone was cooperating and working together to expand the base. It was on that day that High Top proposed it would be a good idea if they held a democratic election. Alright everyone, I think we need a leader. Let's hold an election. And so, the citizens built a small elevated platform on which all the candidates for leader could give a speech outlining why the people should vote for them. High Top went first. Greetings, great citizens oh. of the red team. Oh, My oh. name is... 
No! A player named Vaughn, with one move, had just single-handedly wiped out every possible candidate for leadership. Everything descended into absolute anarchy. Some players ran over to the corpses to steal as much loot as they could. Oh my goodness, so much loot. Vaughn continued to drop TNT on the loot pile in an attempt to claim more victims. Then he ended up pulled down from the sky platform and started hunting down the last surviving citizens. Help, 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 I'm dead. Since Vom was the only possible living candidate, even though he wasn't a leader per se, I decided to crown him the king of the red team. Dictatorship for the win. I think he's a dictator now. Blue team, meanwhile, was still reeling from Organiset's ruthless attack on their base and the loss of countless teammates. We need to get everyone to the top of the pyramid right now. The people decided that with the rest of the old council dead, Adam should be granted emergency powers and be crowned the king of the blue team. He is your crown, Adam. Thank you. I will go down with this great nation if I must. With newfound confidence after having been crowned, Adam decided they would change the civilization's priorities. This is no longer about building the best civilization. This is about getting justice for our fallen friends. Everyone, we're gonna be okay. We're gonna go after the people who did this. Get whatever gear you have and follow me. So, following their king, they set out on a mission of vengeance to take down Pan and Organiset. Due to them being so undergeared though, as soon as they reached the surface, players started getting picked off by mummies. No! Well, I died. Good luck, guys. Someone needs to help. No, I died! How are we dying so much? Oh, uh, we're all dying. Adam, though, not concerned that he'd lost around half of his remaining nation, pressed on to the Mesa Bio, as he had heard that Organiset and Pan were hiding out there. It was in the Mesa that the hunting party met up with Marco. <laughs> yeah, this guy from earlier, who had since started talking to a horse. I trust you, horse. You look like a totally sane person. When you hurt your knee and you can't get back up, you can't get back up. You understand? If you two didn't have voices, I wouldn't seriously be in danger of becoming insane. It was then that the hunting party spotted the two murderers by the river. I seen them, I seen them, I seen them. They're all the way down there. It's offset and Pam. Oh, there's a lot of them, there's a lot of them, there's a lot of them. Yeah, no, that's why we're going to kill them. The chase ensued. Pan and Organiset split up, with Organiset heading north while Pan continued down the river. Adam and a few of his men kept their attention on Pan, while Organiset successfully fought off multiple attackers single-handedly. Pan was no match for Adam and his troops though, who successfully took him out. Yes, yes, yes. Let's go. Organiset fled west until he got to the coast. However, he was soon tracked down and taken out by a group of Adam's men. Damn it, I'm dead. With both the traitors dead, Adam had successfully served justice and his nation was at peace. Oh, I hit you. Oops. Okay, well, By the way, if if this uh, person is strong, I'm, I'm, uh, oh, I'm gonna die. Adam, run. Oh. What? No! no what? Adam, what? No! Then Adam got killed by a mummy. With no leader, Marco, yes, him, was crowned the king of the blue team. Over on Green Team's island, after the food and protection team were wiped out by the zombie rights activists, the nation was in complete chaos. All that remained of civilization was a small village that had been constructed by seven surviving citizens. The players lived in constant fear of the zombie rights activists. Do not tell them where we are, please. Who were patrolling the map, trying to find out where the players were hiding. So there's a problem. We be dealing out so much justice, we can't find any more people to cleanse. Down in the south of the map, with absolutely no government to enforce any kind of law, it was quite literally the Wild West, like complete and utter anarchy. And I mean proper anarchy. Everyone was just going around murdering each other. Oh, Are we killing them? <laughs> oh my god, dude. So many people died, and by the end of the violence, there were only 13 players alive on Green Team. There were 5 zombie rights activists, 7 innocent citizens, and 1 Natty. Yeah, him. And he still had ambitions of destroying society. Natty had just arrived at the Sanctuary Village, and in a twisted act to gain the trust of the citizens, he went around the village handing out iron chest plates and being an all-round nice guy. Do you guys want an apple? Free apple, free apples. Yeah. Oh, I want a free apple. No. After helping defend the village from an invading zombie horde, he had officially gained their trust, and and so, as a part of his plan, he proposed they hold an election to choose a player to be crowned leader of the green team. First went a player named Lunari. I have really liked playing with you guys, even if I have lost a lot of people. I would love for us to stay together and as a leader. Since we, we are communists, I will not be taking the most power. We lead together. Communism. Then it was Natty's turn. I actually agree with Lunari here. I think we should totally strive to create a communist utopia. It is all I have dreamt of. We need to share gear as a community and build as a community and most importantly blow up as a community <laughs> the other team is here
I'm dead. Fortunately, the only casualty came from someone who fell off the platform. So all round, not a very successful bombing attempt. It was then that the zombie rice activists got in contact with the village. Hello, victims! I mean villagers. We are willing to give one of you a nether ingot. Did no, someone say good. about a netherite ingot? Yes, friend. We will give you a nether ingot. Okay, <laughs> well, what, what do you want for the netherite? We need the cores to your village. Oh, it's minus 800, yeah. minus 650. Why would you say it? Because it's netherite. How could you say no to that? The zombie rice activists rushed towards the village, forcing what remained of civilization to flee on foot to the east. When the ZRA arrived at the village, it had been deserted. Ah, what? And ironically, the only person to die from Natty leaking the nation's coordinates was Natty himself. I'm dead. Justice had been served. On Yellow Team's island, B-Bag and his army had been preparing for battle against Race Champ's colony. Enchanting table, potions, destruction. That's our plan. It was clear that the world wasn't big enough for both factions. However, just before things started to turn into war, Race Champ reached out to B-Bag and arranged for the two of them to meet face to face. B-Bag, we would like to meet with you. Yeah, same, same. You know what? I'm heading to right now, actually, alone. <laughs> Alright, head there and I'll meet you. B-Bag, with his army, ventured south to the pyramid, where he cautiously approached the steps. Okay, uh, most of you need to hold back. Only me and Wilding will go in, I guess. Sure. But, but, yeah, be, we'll be around the corner. If I give a certain signal, and you join the battle, because I'm not gonna get killed by this, okay? Then the meeting commenced. So, what do you want to meet up for? I want us to both acknowledge that we are going to play the long game in this game. We both want to win at the end. Yeah, we want to win. And at the sure. end, it comes down to me having to pass you over to leadership. I am happy to do so. Huh. Not right now, though. I mean, for the final event. I am willing to set aside my own little bit of leadership to ensure that we all get there in the end and win this. Hey, Marcus, make a silver crown like that. Yeah, silver. Make, it, make it so we can co-lead. Here is your crown. Be back. You and I together will lead them to victory. Yes. And with that, the great yellow team alliance had been formed. Meanwhile, on Red Team's Island, Von, having murdered half the nation, was now seeking out followers. I want people to follow me. Chill hunt down more people who won't obey me. Wait, there's somebody here. There's somebody here. There's somebody here. Somebody here. It's me. It's me. It's me. Chill. I am your king. I have a crown. Bow for me. Just because I don't want to be executed. See, I'm friendly. Yeah, if I wasn't, I would have killed you. Yeah. Find me another person to kill. I will kill one of you. Alright guys, if we stick here, we're not gonna find anybody. We gotta go out and look. Having accepted that they had until dawn to find a player to feed Vaughn's insatiable appetite for murder, they set out on a journey for blood, knowing that if they didn't find someone, then Vaughn would claim their lives instead. Spoiler alert, since nearly everyone else was already dead, they didn't find anybody. And it was dawn, which meant it was time for one of them to die. Oh, you guys are fucked. Do you see that? Oh, That's the sun. You, you have run out of time. It's dawn. So who wants to sacrifice themselves? A player named Growler drew the short straw. Okay, then I'll pick. Growler, come here. Growler ran for his life, and his former teammates with their dictator gave chase. I'm sorry, Growler, but you gotta go. Sadly though, after a courageous attempt to get away, Growler was hunted down and killed. Von did make a gravestone to honor Growler's death, but couldn't remember his name. What was his name again? The guy killed, the guy killed. Um, his name was Growler. It's awkward. I watch all these videos and they're always just talking about how bad or how evil these dictatorships are, and then it's just really <laughs> fun. And... Yay! Public execution is fun! It was now time for All Out War. This was a battle of ideologies. We've got a dictatorship, a democracy, a fragile alliance, and a group of zombie rights activists. Which of these great civilizations will reign victorious? Let's find out. In the north, Race Jump and B-Bag gathered the Yellow Team's army in the Arctic, where they killed snow zombies for diamonds. It was around this time that Mr. Tetley T, who had been planning to assassinate B-Bag from the very beginning. My current hit, we have a man by the name of B-Bag. Saw his opportunity. Let's go! What the? B-Bag luckily had a water bucket and managed to save himself. F Mr. Telly T knew he had to finish the job. It was now or never. I need to go, I need to do it. Ah! B-Bag had survived the assassination attempt, then went back to farming diamonds with Race Champ. Over in the swamp region of the map, Blue Team, led by Marco, had made an alliance with what remained of Green Team civilization. Wilding, one of B-Bag's top generals, heard that the two teams were forming a coalition, and decided to set out east towards the swamp to crush the alliance before they became a threat. When they arrived at the swamp, they targeted Lunari, the leader of the Green Team, and swiftly took her out. Oh. No! No! The Blue and Green Team coalition knew they weren't strong enough to face Wilding's army, so Marco, now the leader of the coalition, 
coalition decided the best course of action would be to flee, so they set off on a journey south, seeking the safety of the capital city. Over in the mountains, the Red Team had somehow gotten past their differences, and had decided to unite under their dictator Vaughn. They had set up their base on one of the snowy mountain peaks. It wasn't long before the Red Team spotted a green team player. Hey, come down, come down, come down, come down. This is solo green, we can kill him. I bet. The Red Team, confident that they had the numbers advantage over the green player, ventured down from their fortifications to give chase around the mountain. Oh, oh, take him out, it's the king. Suddenly though, a large group of green players emerged from the other side of the mountain. It was the zombie rights activists. The red team had fallen straight into their trap. There's one behind us, behind us, behind us. It's Burb, it's Burb. It was a massacre. I need help, I need help. So I died. And with that, the red team was no more. The only two survivors were Von Knudsen, the dictator, and a player named Skelly Gamer. But neither of them were present at the battle, as they had both ventured north to the Arctic to try and broker a peace deal with the yellow team. However, the yellow team had witnessed the red team getting massacred in the chat. They're killing everyone from red. This didn't fill Race Champ and B-Bag with confidence that the red team would be a good ally to have, but they decided to meet with the two red players regardless. B-Bag, this could be our chance to kill Von before Von, he becomes a serious that is problem. True. I... So what did he come to do here, Von? Well, honestly, I, I came here to collect diamonds and to maybe find you guys. Just in case you couldn't tell, you're heavily outnumbered here. Yeah, yeah, team, we right? see that. But anyways, uh, you see, you have this very tempting protection thin crown on you. You're not the safest here. Bro. Right. Rick, raising my hand. Uh, what about me? The gamer is completely fine, actually. He's harmless. Honestly, yeah, I think I'm just a hostage. Vaughn, <laughs> we could kill you and eliminate a huge threat right now. But if you answer this one question correctly, we might let you live. Okay. Do you like pineapples? Oh, I love them. <laughs> With their code word being said, B Bag and Race Champ turned on Von in an instant and proceeded to hunt him down. This is better taste. This is better taste. Come back here, Von. Von, drop your crown now. Later, losers. Von luckily managed to outpace B Bag and Race Champ in his boat, and so he successfully got away. Let's just say this was an important moment for the alliance between Red Team and Yellow Team. Down in the south, Marco had led the Green and Blue Coalition into the capital city, where they were taking out Nye Zombies in an attempt to get better armor. <laughs> Okay, 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 sorry, sorry. They had constructed a defensive wall around a section of the courtyard to keep out the undead. And they even had a team parrot, which they called Jamal. Yeah. Okay, just stay here and don't move at all. Wait, guys, if we're the last team left, how about we just make tons of beds and go to sleep? Yes, yes. nice. <laughs> that, should be the, that would be the ending, probably. It was then that out of nowhere, the zombie rice activists rushed their base. Oh, they're here! In seconds, they destroyed what remained of the blue team. Oh no! no! Run! However, the ZRA were kind enough to spare their fellow green team citizens. The remaining green team, how do you feel about your blue team allies being slaughtered in front of you? Ah, uh, very bad. Very bad. With the blue team and Jamal all murdered, the ZRA left their short green teammates to mourn the loss of their friends. Why did they even come here? They set off west towards the desert to gather resources to help them armor up for their battle against the yellow team. B-Bang and Race Champ were incredibly concerned after hearing the news that the ZRA had just wiped out the entire blue team. A cold D is going on a killing spree, so so watch out for him. Yeah, yeah, a lot of a lot of the greens that are left are all the people who are killing. Yeah, see? So fearing that they were under geared and ill prepared for war, B Bag went south on a solo mission to gather obsidian for an enchantment table. He spotted a solo zombie rice activist. But little did B Bag know, where there is one zombie rice activist, there is always more. I didn't realize a lot of people here. I'm getting chased. B Bag, the victorious winner of my last video, was completely outmatched by the ZRA and fell to them too, giving the zombie rice activists another crown to their collection. So oh, GG boys, B Bag died. I did. Bag, like, you idiot. Um, I, I, the second they saw me, they all teleported. I can't which? do it. Race Jump was absolutely terrified by the news that his co-leader had been murdered. So he ordered everyone to make a diamond farm to speed up production of better gear. Then he got in contact with Wilding, B-Bag's top general, who'd been on the other side of the map farming zombies. Okay, Race Jump, listen, 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 listen. You fear green. You fear green. But we don't. We have the gear and the amount of people to kill him. All right, we also have the resources to kill him. We just see him as a threat. Yeah, they killed Blue in an instance. Yeah. I'm, uh, so I'm, I'm, they don't underestimate them. While Race Champ and the Yellow Team were hard at work collecting diamonds, the ZRA, having spent some time enchanting their armor at the volcano region, were hearing news of the zombie killings going on in the north. I hear that there are some zombie murderers in the Arctic area, so we're gonna go cleanse them. So they journeyed up to the Arctic towards the Yellow Team, but on the way there, they came across this. Skly Gamer, who had fled the failed red-yellow negotiations, had made a base and had been placing signs. What is your plan now then, Skly? Because most of your team is dead. Legacy, if you can't win, go down in history as someone who just writes random signs. I, I like this one the best. My final message. 
Subscribe to Marcus. <laughs> they, they make fun videos. Well, he's dead. After murdering the poor sign man, they continued their way up north to the Arctic. When they arrived at the snow castle, they realized the yellow team had no idea they were coming. The ZRA stealthily towered up the side of the castle, and with everyone in position, the attack began. Oh, green team's oh, coming! Green. green team's coming! Race Champ and his men were caught completely off guard. Die, zombie killers! Run, run! No. Get your boats out, yo! And in the confusion, panicked, with some players staying to fight, whilst Race Champ and some others fled in boats across the ice. The ZRA knew what they needed to do. They had to take out Race Champ to officially break up the yellow team, so they gave chase. A player named Lucky Finn bravely boated in front of the pursuing ZRA to try and give his leader, Race Champ, a few extra moments to escape. Race Champ pleaded to Wilding, b backs top general from earlier, to come help him. Just get okay, here, well, quicker, I'm being bored to death. Wilding heard the cries of his leader and marched his men over to help as fast as he could. However, Race Champ was on his own and he had to delay the ZRA from taking him out just long enough for Wilding to arrive. Wilding and his soldiers were just down the river. Unfortunately, though, after a long chase, Race Champ couldn't hold out any longer and he too fell to the might of the ZRA. I told you about green. I you told b bag about green. All, I told everybody about green. We couldn't go any quicker. I'm I'm assuming leadership are yellow, we're re-emerging. One minute after Race Champ died, Wilding and his small army found the ZRA and a battle ensued. Oh, Cody, oh, kill, 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 kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him, running. Initially, it looked like Wilding and his team were coming out on top. But once El Cody called in reinforcements, Velo Agvis, I'm in need of assistance. He's his teammate here. Doctor, you know those. Wilding soldiers began dropping like flies. Die, die, die. Okay. The entire team's on me, the entire team's here. I'm gonna die, there's four guys on me. I'm oh, dead. No. And then Wadi himself died too. I'm dead. The ZRA now had four crowns, with the only other crown being held by the lone dictator of the red team, Vaughn. The rest of my team left me. He'd been hiding out of the capital ever since Race Champ and B-Bag tried to murder him. The ZRA heard that Vaughn was hiding out there, and before long, they spotted him. There's a guy right here, a guy right here. Oh, we can get right. another crown. Come back, we want your crown! The red team's dictator, Vaughn Knudsen, who had single-handedly wiped out the majority of his own team, was dead. Damn it, I'm dead. The zombie rights activists had been amassing a significant large kill count. They had single-handedly wiped out the protection team, the food team, Natty, the red team, the blue team, B-Bag, Sklee Gamer, the yellow team, Lucky Finn, Race Champ, Wilding, Wilding Soldiers, and Vom. Wow, <laughs> these guys were some seriously committed activists. And might I mention, they only lost one teammate so far. Then the ZRA spent some time hunting down the stragglers from each team. At one point, there was a survivor hiding in one of the trees. And so, instead of trying to go up there and hunt him down, they decided to blow up the entire forest. What? what? I'm dead. With the rest of the stragglers taken out, they ventured over to the capital city, where they massacred what remained of their own team. Guys, Hello, I'm dead. W. We won! <laughs> then they took the throne in victory. We did it, fellow activists! We cleansed the world! Well, it looks like my civilization won. We've got some building to do, Mr. Scarecrow. Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Cheers, bye bye.